Well, that's really what happened with us in Chicken Soup for the Soul. Mark and I, when we wrote the book, the first book, we said, okay, who's already done what we want to do, which is have a best-selling book in the nonfiction world? And, you know, instantly came to mind John Gray with Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus, uh, Scott Peck with The Road Less Traveled, Ken Blanchard with The One Minute Manager, and, you know, we listed about ten people. And then we said, let's call them up and find out what they did. And we interviewed each one of them for about an hour. They were very gracious to give us their time. And we started looking for patterns. And one of the patterns was they did a radio interview every single day for a year. So we said, well, if that's what it takes, we'll do that. Scott Peck, whose book, The Road Less Traveled, was on the bestseller list for 12 years. I think that's a Guinness Book World Record. Uh, it was over 600 months, uh, or 600 weeks, rather. What happens is we found out he did three radio interviews every day for a year and then one a day for the next 11 years, every single day, including Sundays. And he said, I, I'm a minister, and I go to church on Sunday. You know, I'm, 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 he's a lay minister. And he said, but I still would do a, an interview in the morning or a, later in the afternoon. And uh, so we said, okay, if that's what it takes, we'll do it. So we did the same thing, and sure enough, uh, a year and a half later, our book was number one on the bestseller list. What I found is most of the best people in the world are great teachers, mm -hmm. And they're really magnanimous. There are a few who aren't, and you're going to get rejections, no question. But if it only takes 10 questions to get one yes, why not ask? And, you know, Mark and I wrote a book called The Aladdin Factor, How to Get Everything You Ask For. And uh, basically, you know, we found that there's some world-class askers out there. And, again, we went and interviewed over 50 of them, you know, from Mother Teresa on down to a guy who always buys everything, you know, wholesale, never pays retail. And we said, you know, how do you do it? And, uh, and as a result, we, we began to look at why don't people ask. And one of the things we came up with is fear of rejection, a uh, sense that you're not worthy, and uh, a feeling that you don't deserve to have it. You know, some of it's uh, conditioning. You know, with, I, I'm just dealing with this with my stepdaughter, actually, right now, uh, because she didn't grow up with me in her formative years. She's now 11. Uh, she's only lived with me about the last four years. She, um, uh, I, I said to her the other day, you know, it's time for you to have your own computer. And she said, oh, no, I don't want you to waste money on me like that. And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, we have a computer in the kitchen. I said, what's your mom's computer? And you need to do homework now. She's in the sixth grade and have to type their homework. And I said, sometimes your mom's going to be on a computer and you won't have access to it. You like to instant message your friends and you'll be able to go to Google and do all the stuff. And she said, well, I better ask my dad. He might be mad. And I was looking at there's this whole thing that she's grown up with that it's not okay to have the best stuff because I think, you know, they couldn't afford the best stuff, and so therefore uh, the fear was in the family. If the kids want the best stuff, we can't afford it, so you have to learn to settle for second best. And then if after a while, you don't think you deserve first best. So we deal with the idea that you deserve to have anything that the universe has to offer as long as you don't hurt other people in the process of getting it. And um, I believe it's an abundant universe. I believe there's enough for everybody. Uh, I think it needs to be distributed more equally, and the reason people hoard is they don't think there's enough. And so it goes back to, you know, creating the illusion there's not enough. But the fact is, you know, we have plenty of everything that's really important. Um, you know, the, the, the most important things, as you know, are not things. It's love, the ability to express your creativity, the opportunity to, um, you know, both give and receive love, to feel competent, to make a difference in the world, and, and give and receive hugs and all that. And that doesn't cost any money. But there's also plenty of material things to go around as well.